end here. Day 4 of the spoilers for War of the Spark. We had a very good 3 days of spoilers. We are in day 4 of the spoilers. And today I'm here to show you what have been spoiled today and what interesting cards we have in War of the Spark. There are a couple of nice innovations, nice good cards, nice uncommon rare cards. Let's see together what we have for War of the Spark for day 4. Totally lost. This is a reprint. Put target null and permanent on top of its owner's library. Lazotep Reefer. For one and one black, it's a one two zombie beast. When Lazotep enters the battlefield, MS1. A mass one means that you put a plus one plus one counter on an army you control. If you don't control an army, you put a zero zero zombie army creature in play. If you don't know how to play a mass, I'm going to leave in the description below a link to my video, my tutorial, how to use Amas. Lazotep Behemoth for 1, for 4 and 1 black. It's a 5-4 vanilla creature. Sorin Thirst, 2 black. It deals 2 damage to target creature and you gain 2 life. This is one of those cards that is related to one of the 36 Planeswalker, in this case Sorin. And it's an instant spell and a very good removal spell. Invading Manticore for 5 and 1 red, it's a 4 5 creature. When it enters the battlefield, you amass 2. As I said, amass is the new mechanic for War of the Spark, where you put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on an army. If you don't control the army, you create one with a plus 1 plus 1 counter and another plus 1 plus 1 counter because it's amass. Nahiri Stoneblade. This is a card related to Nahiri. For one and one red, up to two target creatures, each get plus two plus zero until end of turn. Very useful instant card. Grim Initiate. For one red, it's a one one. It has first strike, and when it dies, you amass one. Basically, if it dies, it, you can create another 1-1 one, one creature army and then you can continue amassing the, that creature to make it a very large army creature. Death Sprout, for 1 colorless, 2 black and 1 green, it's an instant, you destroy target creature, search your library for basic land, put it on top on the battlefield tab, then shuffle your library. It is a nice removal spell and also helps you to increase the number of lands you can play. It is a perfect combination between black and green. Lazotep plating, an instant, amass one, you and permanence control gain hexproof until end of turn. This is a very good card to use it as defending and on the same side you create a 1-1 one, one army creature or you continue to improve your army and make it more strong. Gleaming Overseer for 1, 1 blue and 1 black. It's a zombie wizard, 1-4. When it enters the battlefield you amass 1. Zombie tokens you control have hexproof and menace. This is a very strong zombie creature. It is a zombie lord and I think if standard we will have a zombie deck, this will be one of those cards in those deck. God Pharaoh st statue for six spells your opponent cast cost two more to cast. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. It is a very strong card, a very strong limited card. It's very difficult to see play in standard because of hair high casting cost, but it's a very good card. Leyline Prowler, for one, one black and one green, 
It's a two three creature. It has that touch. It has lifing, and you add one mana of any color. Eternal Taskmaster for one and one black. It's a two three creature. It enters the battlefield tapped. When it attacks, you may pay two and one black. If you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Very interesting common card. Now we have here a card in foreign language. This is Krenko, Krenko, boss of Tin Street. It's a legendary creature goblin. Whenever Krenko attacks, put plus one plus one counters on Krenko. Then create X11 one, one red goblin creature tokens where X is, the, is equal to Krenko's power. Basically, you cast the spell, you attack, it is a 2 3 while it is attacking, and you create two goblin counters. If it survives, you attack the next step, it is a 3 4, and you create three goblin tokens. You can imagine how strong this card can be if it's not removed at the early stage of the casting. It's an interesting rare card, and I think can see standard play. Single combat, 3 and 2 white. It's a sorcery. Each player chooses a creature or planeswalker they control, then sacrifice the rest. Players can cast creature or planeswalker spells until the end of their next turn. Very strong card. Storef, Defkarin Lish. For 1, 2 black and 1 green, it's a 5 4 creature, quite strong for 4 casting. It has trample. Whenever this combat damage to a player or planeswalker, return to your hand target creature or planeswalker card in your graveyard that wasn't put there this combat. I believe this will be a very strong card and can see standard play, especially in certain decks. Dreadhorde Butcher for one black and one red. It has haste, it's a 1-1. One -one. Whenever it does combat damage to a player or planeswalker, put a plus one plus one counters on that horde butcher. When that horde butcher dies, it does damage equal to its power to any target. I have already seen some sort of tech deck where this creature, if used with a certain pair of cards, can deal 20, maximum of 21 damage by turn 3. Can imagine how this card can be that powerful. The first playing walker that I'm spoiled today was Nahiri, Storm of Stone. As long as it's your turn, creatures you control have first strike and equip abilities to activate cost one less to activate. Minus X, Nahiri deals X damage to target that creature. It is quite a strong card. Not as much as the rare and mythic planeswalker, but it's still quite strong, especially in Consta in limited. Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord, this is a rare. A rare planeswalker means it is quite stronger. For two, one white and one black, it's a four loyalty counters. As long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers you control have lightning. Plus two, Soren deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Minus X, return target creature with converted, converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. The creature is a vampire in addition to the other types. Very strong planeswalker. Last card I'm going to show you. This is not a spoiler. This is a, an April full card. It's not really rated towards this part. But this is the solution of Bolas. Remove all emblems from the game. I believe that War of the Spark will have a sort of emblem removal because there is no way that you can deal with emblems once they have been created. Stay tuned to this channel, here there is the subscription button for more videos, more spoilers about War of the Spark.